All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of How to Pass the Math FSA, the fourth grade edition. Um, the standard that we're working on today is maths.4.nf.1.2, which is lesson 14 for us comparing fractions. Um, Let me teach you. Example one, use the visuals to write a statement comparing the shaded part of the two fractions below. Now I had to draw in these fractions because when it printed, it was kind of hard for you to see on camera, but you should be just fine when you print it out. Um, so here we have, and, and you can see from the visual on your paper that this slice looks a little bit bigger than this slice. So meaning that this one probably has more shaded in. But I'm gonna show you a math, a cool math trick to easily compare them. So first let's identify the fractions that we have. Okay, start with our denominator for the first one. We have four on the bottom and four on the top, so that makes eight total. And there are seven shaded in. Okay, and for the next one, there are five on the bottom and five on the top, so our denominator is 10, because there's 10 equal parts, and nine of them are shaded. All right, so here's my fancy trick for you. Take your, start from the bottom, shoot an arrow up across, eight times nine is 72. Take an arrow, shoot it up, 10 times seven is 70. So which fraction is greater, the one under the 70? the one under the 72. Well, 72 is greater. That means that 9 tenths would be greater because that's the fraction under it. So my comparison would be 7 eighths is less than 9 tenths. Select greater than, less than, or equal to to complete a true comparison for each pair of fractions. So in this box we have 5 thirds and then we have 7 fifths. Three pachoo, times seven is 21. Five pachoo, times five is 25. 25 is greater. That means that five thirds is greater than seven fifths. <clears throat> Eight halves. Twelve thirds. You can do this this way. I'm going to show you a different way first and then we'll go back to that math trick that I'm showing you. This eight divided by two. The fraction bar also says divided by. Eight divided by two is four. 12 divided by three is four, and four is equal to four. So I know that I'm gonna check the equal box, but let me prove it using the trick, the arrow trick that I just showed you. Two times 12, 24. Three, two times eight, 24. 24 is equal to 24. Last one, two fifths and three fourths. Five times three is 15. Four times two is eight. What's greater, eight or 15? 15. So I want that a less than. Example three. Ooh, ooh, drag the correct symbol to correctly compare the two fractions. Now dragging is something that you do when you are taking the computer-based test, which will be for fourth grade next year in this 2016-2017 school year. Um, but we can draw a line to show that we're gonna drag it. So 12 ninths and four thirds. Let's compare them. 12 ninths, 4 thirds, 36, because 9 times 4 is 36, and 3 times 12, do you see why it is necessary for you to learn your multiplication facts and be fluent? That's why your third grade teacher told you, you got to learn your facts, you got to learn how to multiply quickly. This is why it makes this kind of stuff easy, and it never goes away. You're gonna need multiplication, kids, even in fractions. All right, so 36 is equal to 36, so this is equal to that. Drag it up. This is example four. Which statement below correctly compares the two fractions? Let's do our trick again. 
Actually, I'm going to teach, I am going to do the trick, but I'm going to teach you the visual way too. So I'm seeing the same fraction here. I'm seeing one half and I'm seeing three fifths. One half, three fifths, one half, three fifths, one half, three fifths. I'm going to draw this out. So we're comparing two fractions. So I like to draw rectangles to compare because it's easy. Make sure it's a nice looking rectangle. Since we're comparing two fractions, I'm going to split my rectangle in half. Okay, I'm going to draw one half here and three fifths in the second one. Okay, so one half. So this is broken into halves and I'm shading in one. For the next one, I'm breaking it into fifths. I'm going to kind of get in the way so I can see real quick. So fifths, try to make it as equal as possible. Uh, See, this chunk over here is a little bit bigger, so let me redo that. Takes a little bit to get good at them. That looks better. Those pieces look more equivalent. And I'm shading in three. Uno, dos, tres. Which fraction covers more of the area or is further from here? This one, three fifths. So we know that three fifths needs to be the greater one, so it's going to end up being B, because 3 fifths is greater than B. That's the visual way. I love this way too, because you can visually see which one is greater. But let me show you the arrow trick real quick. Two times three is six. Five times one is five. Five is not greater than six, so that one's wrong. Two times three is six. Five times one is five. 5 is less than 6, so this is true. 5 times 1 is 5, 2 times 3 is 6, 6 is not equal to 5. That one's wrong. 5 times 1 is 5, 2 times 3 is 6, 6 is not less than 5. Okay, so now we're on example 5, and our job right now is to select all the fractions that are less then three-fourths. So we want three-fourths to be the greater fraction of the two. So let's use our cross-multiplication arrow method. Two-thirds and three-fourths. Three times three is nine. Four times two is eight. Eight goes with the two-thirds, which is less. So this one is correct. Four-fifths. Three-fourths. 5 times 3 is 15, 4 times 6, I'm sorry, times 4 is 16, 4 fifths has a 16 which is greater, so this one is not less. Let's do 4 thirds, which I already know is bigger because there's greater because it's a fraction greater than 1, but just to show you how you can use the method I've been teaching. 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 4 is 16, 4 thirds has 16, which is greater, so 4 thirds is not less than 3 fourths. 5 halves and 3 fourths. I know that this one is not going to be right either because 5 halves is a fraction greater than 1 because the numerator is greater than the denominator. But I'll show you still, 2 times 3 is 6, 4 times 5 is 20, 20 is with the 5 halves, which is greater, so no. Same thing here, 6 thirds. Numerator is greater than my denominator, so it's a fraction greater than 1. 3 fourths is part of a whole. It is not greater than 1, so I know that this is going to be less. Um, 3 times 3. Do you guys hear that bird? There's a bird outside that's really loud. I wonder if you can hear it. <laughs> um, 4 times 6 is 24, so 6 thirds is greater than 3 fourths. Come on, 2 eighths, give me something to work with, something to select. 8 times 3 is 24, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 is less than 24, so 2 eighths is less than 3 fourths. That is right. Molly has two fraction models 
each divided into equal sections. Okay, so there's two models. I'm going to use my rectangle method again. But she's saying that there's two models. Okay, the fraction represented by model A is greater than the fraction represented by model B. So whatever I draw in here needs to be the greater one. Model A is divided into four sections. Two, three, four. Almost looks equivalent. There, okay? And two are shaded. One, two, Model B is divided into eight sections. So kind of like our fourths, but those each fourth is cut in half to make one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let me make this guy a little bit more equivalent. Okay. And it doesn't tell us how many are shaded in Model B. What do you know about the number of sections shaded in Model B? Explain your answer. I know that if B needs to be less, then it needs, it could be one out of eight, it could be two sections shaded in, or it could be three sections shaded in. Those are the only, oper only um, situations that could occur because if I had one more shaded in, that would be equivalent to model A, but model A needs to be greater. So let's write that out. It's an open response, so we need to write that using words. So follow with me, and I need to stay within the box. I know, what do you know about the number of sections in Model B? Explain your answer. I know that Model B must have less than four sections shaded in order to be a fraction less than model A. All right, before we leave today, let me leave you with some words to inspire and motivate you. Um, let me tell you the backstory though for this first. So there's this gymnast, her name is Nadia Comaneci, and she was in the Olympics a long time ago. Somebody asked her, Nadia, you are so good at gymnastics. What is your secret? You are like better than everybody else. And she said, Hard work has made it easy. That is my secret, and that's why I win. So think about that and plug that into your life. I hear this all the time. Miss McCarthy, oh my gosh, you're so good at math. Uh, how do you make these videos? How do you make these problems? You're just so good. You make it look so easy. What's your secret? It's hard work. Hard work has made it easy. It's not hard for me to do this, but it's hard for other people because they haven't worked hard like I have. It's my secret and it's how I win, okay? You have to know how to work hard. You want to get a level three on the FSA? You want to get a level four? You want to get a level five? You want to be the best, the top highest with level five? It can be done, but you got to work hard and people are going to say, man, how'd you get a level five? You made it look so easy. What's your secret? Uh, well, I worked hard and I watched Miss McCarthy's How to Pass the Math FSA videos and I downloaded her complete guide so I practiced even more than what the video showed. That's my secret and that's why I win. I worked until I understood it and now it's easy for me. Awesome quote, plug it into your life and tell me if, some, if you worked hard at something and you make something look easy, comment below. I want to hear what you've got.